morning. We're going to go ahead and begin our Bible class uh, hour this morning at this time. Uh, we are very excited to have a, a guest speaker this morning, uh, our brother Wade Phillips. Uh, he and his wife Joanna uh, have been uh, full-time missionaries in Guam the past couple of years. Uh, we've been uh, supporting them here at Central. Uh, we are very excited to have them uh, uh, kind of stop our way. If you know anything about mission work and being a missionary, uh, generally there's a, there's a time of year or even times of year where you're traveling to different congregations and meeting family and friends and getting to catch up when you are in the States. Uh, I know that their schedule has likely been very busy uh, being back in here uh, in the States for a, a little while. Uh, and nonetheless, we appreciate them making the stop to, to come here uh, and be a part of our services here at Central today. Uh, just a few things about, uh, about the Phillips, uh, and then I'll, we'll say a prayer, and then I'll turn the rest of the time over to him. Uh, like I said, they've been in full-time work in Guam the past couple of years. Prior to that, they were over at the Twin City Church of Christ, uh, which is really just up the street in Batesburg, Leesville, um, and prior, that's where they were serving. Uh, they have two kiddos, a son and a daughter, uh, and they're expecting, uh, their daughter is expecting their first grandchild here in January. So I know that's an exciting time. They'll definitely want to be here or getting back here for that, uh, as that's going to be a great thing. Let's go to God in prayer, and after which we'll turn it over to Brother Wade. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful to be here today. We're, we're gracious and so grateful to have uh, Wade and Joanna come our way and with their busy schedule and and going from place to place, we, we just ask your safety upon them and blessings upon them. And we ask your blessing upon the time that we have with them today uh, to hear about the work in Guam, to hear from your word, to be strengthened, to be unified, to, to learn more about your character and, and how big a God that you are. Lord, we ask your blessings upon us this morning as we hear from your word to help it to soak into our hearts and our minds so we can become the people of, of God that we, you know that we can become. Lord, bless us and bless our time this morning. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. truly is an honor to be with you. We have been waiting and wanting to get here for quite some time, uh, but finally we're, we're, we're asked to come and speak to you. Yes, our travel has been kind of uh, hectic. We got home just a couple of weeks ago. We were in Middle Tennessee last week, 40, 45 miles each side of Nashville, morning and night. Uh, and of course, next week we'll be above Little Rock, Arkansas and Judsonia. The next week we'll be in Kentucky. The next week we'll actually be home. <laughs> so... Uh, and then the next week, back in Jackson, Mississippi. So that's just part of it. We enjoy it. We love meeting those who we haven't met before and seeing those who, who we already know. Uh, you are our brethren. You are our friends. And we are excited to be with you and look forward to the rest of our time. Yes, we are excited about the grandchild. Uh, Joanna's going to stick around and help our daughter through that. I'm going to go back to Guam for about a month and come back hopefully right before he's born. It's a he, yes. Or he's a he. Uh, and then uh, stay for a couple of weeks, go back and get at it again. Uh, and she will stay and help, help Gracie, our daughter, uh, adjust to being a mommy for a while. Uh, and then come and join me back on Guam. So pray for us in all of that. Me being by myself, I, lo I love having my help meet with me uh, very much. Uh, and it's difficult when we're apart. Uh, so uh, pray for us that, that we will get through that just, just fine. Who believes in providence? God's providence. Okay. I always ask that question. I'm going to ask you, if you don't believe, then why do you pray? Uh, we, we ask God to provide, so we must believe that He will provide, and He does. Uh, but sometimes we have to step back and realize that things will happen in His time and not our time, uh, and that's a difficult proposition, isn't it? We want things to happen. We want them to happen yesterday. That's, that's the kind of culture that we live in today, and it may have always, already been that way or always been that way. Uh, but now we, we want things to happen right now, but it doesn't always happen. When we set out to raise funds to go to Guam full time, actually, we started out many years ago trying to go to the Philippines full time. Guam, that little rock in the, in, in the Pacific there, got in the way of the Philippines. Uh, so we decided to go and work there. Uh, evangelism was not being done. Uh, outside of what we're doing, it's still not being done. So we, uh, we decided we needed to go there and work. So we started raising funds. We wanted it to happen overnight, of course. In 2019, we got the ball rolling. Things were looking great. And then you know what happened in early 2020, right? Yeah. 
That shut down fundraising. <laughs> it was a tough time to try to be raising funds to go full-time missions. But always we thought in God's time, in God's time it will happen. When he wants it to happen, if he wants it to happen, it will. So in about September of 2021, we weren't there yet. Uh, we, we were getting closer, but we weren't there yet. We changed elderships only because we only had two at Elkmont, which was home for a very long time, and, and then they oversaw our work as well. Uh, but they were getting elderly. One of them was in very bad health, and the other one said, you might want to look for another eldership. Well, we had two in mind. By the way, Central was one of them. But uh, the first one we talked to was closer to home, uh, and, and that was the only two that we really had in mind, and that was North Brandon Church of Christ and then the good men here as well. But North Brandon decided to take it on. They said they'd never overseen a missionary before, but they hit the ground running like they were old pros at it. They have been very, very good to us and for us. Uh, and I actually pray for them as well. Uh, so they will continue in this. And for your elders always and all the things that they, they must do. But in God's time, we started raising, we started raising in September. We, we, uh, I, I, I think, checked on a house on Guam to rent because, of course, we needed a place to live, obviously. Well, a young realtor messaged me back or emailed me back. His name is Dagan Torres. Dagan is a, he's a funny and fun young man. He's a little bit or a whole lot ADHD. Uh, we, we love him dearly, and you'll see more about him why in a minute. But Dagan messaged me back and we got to know each other a little bit. He called one day and said, well, what are you looking for? And I gave him ideas of, you know, the checklist of what we would like to have. Uh, but of course, just whatever we can get. So I think it was December 6th of 2021, December 5th, December 6th. We were sitting in Dulles Airport waiting to fly back to Gulfport, Mississippi. And our deacon of finance or finance deacon, however, how you want to say that. Uh, our wonderful man that takes care of our money for us, he emailed me and said that we just received two checks, two checks that put us where we needed to be full-time on Guam. So, of course, at that time, we were masked up, thankfully, because tears were running down our eyes, you know, sitting there in the airport, and we didn't want everybody to see that, uh, but we were happy. It was happy tears. But, of course, then it was, well, now what? All that time trying to raise those funds, and I said, well, what do we do now? Well, we go do what we planned on doing. So I called Dagan the day after we got home. I said, Dagan, we need a house. We started looking and it took a while. We got there in February 20, of last year. And finally, we, we found a house. Dagan said, I think this is the one. This will work out. Well, we did. We were at the realtor's office signing the lease. And it's, a, it's even more problematic on Guam than it is here, by the way. It's, it's a lot of paperwork. But we were doing that. And as, right at the end, Dagan said, so I know you're with the churches of Christ. I don't know anything about them. Can you tell me about that? Brethren, I don't know about you, but the preacher and me, the bells are going ding, 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 ding. Yes, I can tell you. I can tell you about the churches of Christ. We had an hour long Bible study in Ellen's realty office. I said, Dagan, why don't you, since you know where our house is, obviously, why don't you come to our house and, and we will, we'll share a meal and we'll study the Bible together every week. He said, oh, I would love that. Let, let me ask Hen or Hennessy, his, his fiance at the time. Let me ask her. Two hours later, he said, we're in. So Tuesday night, the following week, they came. Joanna fixed a delicious meal. Again, I cannot remember what that meal was, but I know it was good. And then we studied the Bible. We used the Back to the Bible series just because we knew where they were. Religiously, we knew they had some Bible knowledge. We knew that it would be a good place to start. First book, they got it. They were in. They got it. I said, all right, won't you come back next week on Tuesday? And we'll eat them, eat them another meal and we'll study them more. And he said, that, both of them said, that's, that's great. We'll do that. So the next week, come back. Same thing, they get it. And you just see these wheels turning and you know, things going on in their mind. And you just, you just know. Well, they were living in a situation where they should not have been living. And we knew this. We'd figured it out by this time. So through that second one, you know, there's the, 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 the talk about the elders and the requirements for elders. So I spent a little extra time on that husband of one wife thing. Well, then we got to the third week. They came back. And about halfway through that study, you just knew. They knew. You knew they wanted to be baptized. You knew they were at that point. 
So I asked him, I said, you know, we've went First Beach, which I'll show you here in just a minute. It's just down the road from us. It's less than a mile. Why don't we go right now? Of course, it was dark, but that's okay. There's no sharks within the reef or jellyfish usually. And he said, Wade, we've, we've got some things we've got to work out first. I said, okay, all right. Well, that was Tuesday, Friday night, and this is, this is hard for me, by the way. This is, this is First Beach. I don't know what that thing is called, but that's about a mile from our house. So if you see these coordinates, if you figure those out, uh, you can find us, I think, from there. Well, Dagan, I'll go ahead and play this. Well, let me back up. Maybe it'll play. Maybe it won't. There's a video supposed to be there, but that's okay. All right. So, anyway, he said, we've got to work something out. Friday night, he calls. He says, Wade, we, we want you to baptize us on Sunday. I said, Dagan, it's Friday night. You know the urgency. You know that you need to do this now. He said, I know, but we can't. We can't get away from work. I said, what about tomorrow? He said, we can't. We're busy all day and all evening, both of us. I said, well, I don't like it, but we'll pray for you. We'll pray that you live long enough to make it to Sunday morning. And I was dead serious about that. And we did. He said, but there's another thing. We also want to get married. Unbeknownst to us, they had gone the day after that last Bible study and gotten their marriage license. I said, Dagan, I tell you what, I will baptize you Sunday morning on one condition. He said, what's that? I said, that you abstain from that relationship until you are baptized, until you, well, until you are married. He said, Wade, that's already done. We realized it and we, 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 we figured that out. So they'd already repented of that relationship. They just weren't baptized yet. So Sunday morning, they did live that long. And we baptized Hennessy first. She's a little Filipina, about that tall, I guess. And then we baptized Dagan. He's not that short. He, he's my height, maybe a little bit taller. Uh, but the baptistry is very small and it's concrete. So uh, in order to not have bloodshed, we put him on his knees and baptize them. Of course you ask, and I do too, there's water everywhere around you. Why in the world do you use a baptistry? I don't know, but they do. So, so we did. Well, the next day they became Mr. and Mrs. Dagan Torres. And folks, this is not just one of those, well, we baptized them and you know, blah, blah, blah. They are faithful. They're very, very faithful. Every time they can be there, they are there. He's a realtor, she's a school teacher, plus other projects that she has that she works with that sometimes Wednesday night especially, they can't be there. But they're there. They also continue to study at our house every Tuesday and then moved to Saturday eventually. And we started inviting our military uh, singles, military families as well to come and study with us. Is there some that live right next or right close to us? So one of our things that we started out with, and I'm just going to pause right there in a second. One of the things we started out looking at was the need for military families to have those ministering to them. We did not realize that need until 2019 when we visited with a family there on Guam and I asked them, what is your biggest need? What, what's the thing you need more than anything? They said, family. We didn't know. We weren't military. We were always close to home. We didn't know. We didn't realize that. But there they are, some of them, you know, five, six, or 8,000 miles like us away from home without mom and dad, without aunts and uncles, without brothers and sisters, without cousins. They needed family. So we set out from there, we're going to be family to our military Christians. And we have been told several times, you are our family here. We love you. And we love them. So that grew, I think uh, the most we had was 13, I guess, all together on, on one Saturday night. And it kind of goes up and down depending on who has duty which day and if they're deployed or whatever. Uh, but we love them dearly. We've enjoyed being with them. Is, is Catherine Lewis here? Oh, I was so hoping she would be in here because I'm going to talk about her little brother a little bit. Actually, I wanted to get some stories about her little brother. But anyway... <laughs> This is what Dagan sent me two months after they were baptized and married. Folks, this is why we were convinced that it happened in God's time. You all read that? We would still be lost if it weren't for God putting y'all in our lives. I believe that happened at the right time. I believe God got us there at the right time for that reason. 
with that ripe fruit just hanging there to be picked. And he just put us together. I, I can't believe anything different than that. Well, folks, we're still looking for that, that hang, low-hanging fruit. We're also looking for that difficult-to-pick fruit. And it's all over that island. But more than that, in about July of this year, maybe August, I said, I talked to the leadership there at the church, and that's a whole long story. But I said, do you think maybe that we could get Dagan to teach on Wednesday nights? Oh, that's a good idea. So Dagan began teaching Wednesday night Bible class. And folks, he's really good at it. He gets deep. Right now he's on the Minor Prophets. And I'm not talking about just a brief survey on the Minor Prophets. A, 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 a deep study on the Minor Prophets. That's a proud papa moment right there. I had tears in my eyes that entire evening. In fact, the second time I did too. I've gotten over it now. Uh, but that's what it's all about. Uh, we're, we're so happy about that. When we first talked to your elders about supporting us, uh, after we talked to them about the families, uh, the military families and the needs they have, they had mentioned to us that their two ministers were also counselors, or that there were two counselors here. I knew uh, that, that Scott was one of them. And so they had even volunteered and at some point possibly sending one of them there or both of them there at different times. And it just hasn't got to that point yet. Hopefully it will. But one of the things that we deal with, that you deal with, and everybody deals with is mental health or our mental health issues. Pat Sablon was a very good man, except when he was having mental health issues. But there were times all of last year that he studied with, we, we talked to him, he studied with another friend of ours who was there as, as a missionary, Wayne Parker, and they talked about needs. They talked about the, the gospel, of course, and about every other week, Pat would, he would attend worship most every Sunday. About every other week, I'd say, Pat, what do you need to do? He knew. He knew he needed to be baptized, but every time, I just don't believe I can live up to that. I said, live up to what? I don't know that I can live up to being a Christian. I said, Pat, none of us can live up to the example of Christ. All of us stumble. All of us have to get on our knees at some time and beg for forgiveness. Finally, in September of last year, I, I, we were walking out of worship uh, assembly, and I, I asked Pat, I said, oh, say, what are you waiting on? There's water right across the street. He said, I'm ready. I've been thinking about it all week long. I'm ready. We went to First Beach. We baptized Pat. And therefore, that time until we came home in November, everything was great. We got back on January 29th. And on January 31st, we lost Pat. It's not just about doing evangelism. It's not just about having Bible studies. It's about dealing with people and the problems that they face. And it's difficult. It's very hard to talk about because I love Pat very much. His wife is a big part of our life. Uh, Andrea, she helps us with some things and you'll see some of those in a minute. But I just want you to know that mission work isn't isn't a lot different than local work. You deal with people, and sometimes it's, it's hard. Sometimes it's joyous, and sometimes it's not. Building relationships with Chamorros. Are there any Chamorros here by any chance? I didn't figure there were, but mostly Chamorros are just normal, everyday people, great people, love them dearly. We're surrounded by them where we live now. Uh, great people. They watch our house. They even put our shutters up before uh, Typhoon May War got there in May. Uh, they, they're just wonderful people. Love them dearly. Well, we had visited on the other side of the island from us, and uh, that video was going to show you exactly where we live, but it didn't work. But uh, we live in a village called Epan. It's a sub-village of Talafofo. How many of you are Psych fans? Well, don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Who watched the show Psych? Anybody? Okay. In season two, episode 12, I beg you to go look at that. There is a uh, there's an episode where, where Sean and Gus are in the, in the operating room or in a hospital room, and, and Sean is talking to Gus, calling him his nickname, whatever it was at the time. I can't even remember. But he said, if you do that again, I'm going to put you on the next raft of Talafofo. Well, folks, we live in Talafofo. So when we see that, see that, that show, it's, it means something to us because we know exactly First Beach would be the beach that they would go to if he was sending him on the first raft of Talafofo. I'll get over that. But anyway, on the other side of the island, there's a village called Umatic or Humatak. 
It is the village in the bay right below there. You can't see it. It'd be to the left of there uh, where Ferdinand Magellan allegedly set foot in 1521. So a lot of history there, a lot of Spanish, a lot of Catholic history, of course. Well, Ed here is Chamorro. He's not your typical Chamorro. He is a southern part of the island Chamorro. He's a wild man. He's a good man, a crazy man, but a, but a, a good man. Well, he and most of the folks that he hangs around with are also just the same. They, they, they don't leave Umatic or very far from that. Well, I decided several months ago to go every Tuesday and spend an hour, hour and a half with Ed and whoever else shows up. I've met the mayor, I've met cousins, I've met nephews, I've met people I probably wish I hadn't and some that probably wish I hadn't met them. Uh, but he has a nephew that, uh, like most of them, uses foul language. So he's young enough I could get by with it and I just look at him and say, John, did you really need to say that? So now every time I'm there and John slips up, he'll say, oh, sir, I'm so sorry. So, so maybe, just maybe, I'm getting some influence there, but I'm building relationships. And hopefully one day we'll be able to have a big Bible study there at that park, which is Fort Soledad, uh, with Edwin, with John, and all the other relatives and all the other friends that come. But they're getting to know me, and that, that's one of the things that we just strive for. Who's heard of the gospel of Christ? And I don't mean just the gospel of Christ, but programming the gospel of Christ. Wow, okay. I encourage you to check it out. Uh, TGOC or, or, or the gospel of Christ.com. Uh, it is operated out of McMinnville, Tennessee. Uh, Joy Farrell is the director of operations. Ben Bailey is the speaker on most of the videos. They're very good. But it comes on, it's a 30 minute program every week. You'll usually see it in the mornings on Sunday. We have it at five o'clock in the evening because of course, uh, in the morning time on Guam on Sunday, they're 14, 15, 16 hours ahead, I guess, for us right now. I uh, haven't done that math. Maybe 17 hours from here. Uh, it's live sports on Sunday morning, so you're not getting that slot. But 5 o'clock in the evening is a pretty good slot. We had to work really hard, or, or Joy did, to get that down to $100 a week. We had congregations, individuals that jumped in in 10 days. We had that funded for the first year. And for the next two years, including this one, uh, congregation in Martin, Tennessee, uh, is paying for all of that. So we're thankful for that. Before we got there and did this, there was no Christian broadcasting, no Christian television at all in the Marianas or Micronesia, none, zero. So we said, we gotta change that. We've had several people that tell us that they appreciate that, that programming. They watch it every week or they say, hey, I know that commercial, is that your voice? And no, it's not. Uh, but we look forward to adding more eventually. I have a video channel or YouTube channel for there that I got started on, I've let it lapse, but uh, we're getting back to it hopefully when we get back or I get back uh, at the end of, this, end of December. Uh, in July, we had planned on when we got back, uh, which would have been July 5th, we were going to Umatic and hold a gospel meeting. I already had permission, we had the pavilion uh, planned, we had it reserved. Well then in May, uh, Maywar hit, Super Typhoon Maywar. Uh, so that kind of messed up those plans. But we said, hey, we've already got these lessons. We're, gonna, we're just going to go ahead and have them at the Asin building, the Asin Church of Christ, A-S-A-N. Uh, so we did. And Tim West is one of our overseeing elders at North Brandon. Uh, he did one lesson. Uh, Greg Kwan is part of the leadership there at Asin. Uh, did another. He was excited about it. He was going to speak in tomorrow uh, at Umatic if we'd have had it. So hopefully I've still got him on the string so that we can do that at some point in the near future. And then, of course, me. Joanna decided some time back, I think it was March, that, hey, Manilao, that's how you say that, Manilao, has a Thursday night market every week. So why don't we go set up a booth? I reluctantly agreed, and we did. And I'm so glad that we've done that. We have talked to so many people. We've made so many contacts, so many friends. We've had one Bible study come from it so far. Uh, a couple that lives very close to us who sets up, you can't really see them too well, right there, that's uh, Glenn and Jolene. Uh, they have visited at Ashland right before we left, Wednesday and Sunday. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully something will come from that as well. But you don't know till you try. You don't know till you put yourself out there. And that's, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, this, by the way, is my new friend Khalid. He is the Muslim missionary to Guam. Very, very nice man. Uh, we're building a relationship. Who knows where that may go? Trust me, I will not be converted. Uh, but I'm hoping that he might 
But at the very least, as a Khalid, we may not see eye to eye on religion, and we may never see eye to eye on religion, but we can have a cup of coffee together, can't we? So when we get back, we, when I get back, we're planning on doing that. In fact, he invited me just this week to a peace conference that they're having that I'm glad I wasn't there because I would have had to say no anyway uh, to speak at it. Uh, but the only thing involved religiously was recitation of the Quran. Uh, so I could not be a part of that uh, at all. But do want to build that relationship. By the way, I'm going to back up a little bit. Something that many people have pointed out to us. I can't believe you're sitting up next to the Catholic Church building. Yes, yes, we are. Okay. Uh, funny thing about the mango festival at Agate, or Hagat, but Agate, is there were no mangoes. Typically, during that time of year when the mango festival happens, there are mangoes all over the place. The streets in some places get slick from mangoes. People get sick of seeing mangoes, seriously. I don't understand that. I love mangoes. But I hadn't had a tree in my yard either. But this year, they were few and far between anyway. And then Maywar hit, and they just were gone. I told a guy, he said he had 10 in, 10 in his one tree. I said, you ought to just auction those things. You could probably buy a car. They were that rare. Uh, but they did import some frozen from somewhere, and they had, you know, drinks and that kind of thing with it. But I want to tell you this. This is, again, on the other side of the island from us. This is Jeff Simmons. He's one of our Navy guys. Jeff is kind of like our son on Guam. Jeff's about this tall. But he talks like this. He's from Texas. And you have no doubt he's from Texas when he talks. Uh, but Jeff does come and help us some of the, uh, the, the markets and the festivals and that kind. He'll come over to the house. Uh, he'll text and say, have you got any leftovers? Or, you got any leftovers? Uh, and he'll come and eat with us, uh, fall asleep on the couch, that kind of deal. Uh, but we, we love him and all of them uh, very dearly. We probably had a thousand people stop by our, our table and pick up a tract, get a Bible, get a book, or just say hi. Uh, so we know they were at least doing some good. People are recognizing that there is a thing called the Church of Christ. They had no idea before. In fact, when we got there last year, we contacted both chaplains' office on Anderson Air Force Base and Navy Base Guam to ask them what they knew about the Church of Christ. So, well, we don't know that there is one. They had no idea. So now, when you get there, if you're military, Air Force or uh, Navy, or maybe Army if you're going to the Air Force Base as well, you receive a pamphlet on religions and all that stuff there, and the Ashton Church of Christ is in it. It wasn't before. So now, at least people can find us. I build a website, also Facebook pages, uh, so we get that information out there. Manilao is also home to several thousand Chukis. If you ever heard of the island of Truk, it's Chuk now, has been for many years. Uh, but lots of Chukis live uh, on Guam, and many of them live in Manila, and most of them are very, 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 very destitute. So again, Joanna said, why don't we get school supplies and, and take to them or give to them? So we did. Uh, we gave away, I think, 83 backpacks, and of course, this was kind of last minute. We couldn't get the clearance at Walmart ones. We had to get what we could there, so it cost a chunk of money. But 83 backpacks, hundreds of crayons and pencil packs and glue and whatever else that they needed, very well received, a whole lot of thank you so very much. Well, of course, in those backpacks or in those packages, they got information about the church as well. Uh, so again, it's just getting the seed planted where we can. I am probably the only man on Guam, uh, probably most anywhere, trying to get into prison. I've been trying since March. I just don't know what I have to do. Well, actually, I do, but I'm not going to do that. There's a man from Chuk who has been wanting to, be, wanting to be baptized for almost four years. Four years. And we cannot get in there to baptize him. I still don't know why. I know why for me, because those who have supposedly been working on that since March have not done their job. And we have about got to the end of our rope on that one. And the next step is the mayor's office or the, the governor's office, actually, and see what we can accomplish from there. But there are many Chukis and there are, of course, others who are they're, they're a captive audience, of course, but they're, they're willing and wanting to hear the word. Many of them are actually studying with World Bible School. They do the correspondence courses of World Bible School. I just want to get in there to teach. Many of them need a teacher. Most of them need a teacher. They can't understand it without that teacher. So we need to get in there. So pray that that will happen for us. Um, there is one 
prisoner there who is also Chu Keys. He's a member of the church, has been for many, many years. Uh, he did some, a couple of bad things, uh, and he is in prison for 13 more years, I believe. I go see him once a month, sometimes twice a month. Uh, but once a month also is incoming day for him, and he can receive toiletries and snacks and that kind of thing. Uh, so we'll take that to him. Another missionary actually who was there provides most of the funding for that, thankfully. Uh, we'll pick up what, what we need to, to to finish off his list. But once a month I get to do that, but I also get to build a rapport with the guards there uh, in that little building. And they're wonderful people. They go above and beyond. And I tell them every time, I thank you for being who you are and doing what you do. And being so kind about it, because trust me, that's not a place where you normally would find kind people, but they are. Also, we had a situation where a Trico, the prisoner, called me one day, one of many, many, many days. And he, he said, uh, sir, uh, do you think it possible that the church could buy a washing machine? I said, well, okay, why? They have to be donated. You would think in a prison that washing machines would be part of the funding that they get, right? Wrong. Any appliance, every appliance, and a lot of other things have to be donated. So I talked to leadership at the church. I talked to my elders, and uh, we actually bought two washing machines because both of theirs had gone out at the same time. They had been three and a half months without washing machines. So they had hand washed everything they had to wash. So we went to uh, Low, or Home Depot. Yeah. I get confused. We have Lowe's at Gaucher and Home Depot on Guam. Uh, but we went to Home Depot. We found two good Maytags that were re relatively affordable uh, and not too complicated. Uh, and we had those delivered to uh, the prison there. And of course, they were very grateful for that. But that shocked me that you have to donate those things. One of the things we do, and I encourage you to do that here, every time you have visitors, by the way, I commend you for the way that you handle when people come in. Several people asked us, is this your first time here? Or introduce themselves. That's wonderful. That doesn't happen everywhere. And that's, that's great. That, whoever's making sure that happens, or if you just take it upon yourselves, whatever, that's fantastic. And we're thankful for it. It was great to see. But if someone comes in on Sunday or, or even Wednesday that you've never met before, and they're new here, or they're just visiting, whatever, offer to take them to eat. Take them to lunch. Offer to even ask them into your house to take them to Sunday lunch, Sunday dinner. Get to know them. We spent several days on Oahu on our way back through this time. We take one day every time now. We've learned that helps tremendously with jet lag. If you will break it up and yeah, you say, yeah, it's Hawaii. Well, it's the only halfway point. Uh, there's no other rocks out there to land on really. That, so uh, that, that's the one. It's either that or Tokyo and that's not exactly halfway. But the purpose for our visit there was not to see the sites, although we did see a few, but it was to spend time with their preacher at Honolulu Church of Christ. They have baptized over 20 people in the past year. Every single study that resulted in a baptism, everyone started out over a meal. You want to convert people? Feed them. You want to get to know them? Feed them. How do you get to know people better? Sit across the table from them. But also, and I know your elders are there and all the leadership here is on board with that evangelism. You've got to have strong spiritual leaders and they do. They want people converted. They want new Christians to come into that church. They admire other people who come and help even. Uh, but there's so many things going on there, but we wanted to learn what we could from them that hopefully we could carry some of that back to Guam and, and wherever else we may go, including just sharing that information with you. But Sunday dinners are a big part of what we do as well. Every Sunday, if we're not, or most every Sunday, if we're not taking visitors out, we're taking members out. Uh, and this is actually, well, you see Pat there and his wife, Andrea, uh, her son, Deshaun, and these are the Parkers. Uh, we actually were with them last weekend in Tennessee. Uh, Wayne is now the uh, missionary in residence at Freed Hardeman for this year. Uh, they are looking to go to Cyprus to work. Uh, we want them back on Guam. But that's Wayne, Christy, their son Gavin, and Piper, their daughter who giggles like you've never heard before. Uh, but we get to know folks by just eating with them. And I encourage you to do that. Another time we carried out Brian Mikado. He is Filipino. Uh, Brian does not speak a lot of English, uh, but he is a wonderfully nice man. 
Brian is one of those sad cases to me. He is an H-2B, I think it is, a visa worker, a construction worker. And when they're on contract, they don't go anywhere. He had a son born in July. He's yet to meet him. And that breaks my heart. Uh, but I guess that's just the, the nature of things that, that I'm not used to. But Brian was extremely grateful that we spend time with him, that we treat him to lunch. We've taken him to our house a couple of times. Uh, and by the way, the guy is really, really good at cornhole. He said he's never played before, but all he hits is the hole. That's it. Uh, another thing, Fellowship Mills, we got there last year and we realized, we talked about family. I want to make sure I have enough time. We talked about family and and we realized that there was no family atmosphere there at the one congregation on Guam. We said, we're going to change that. So on the Sunday before we had this fellowship meal, this first fellowship meal at our house, there were 31 people who attended at Assam. By the way, within about three months, that was up to about 50 every week. People enjoy being a family. Well, 28 of them showed up at our house on Saturday, including us, of course. You can tell they wanted, they wanted to be together. They wanted to have a good time. They wanted to get to know each other. And that just was not happening. Several, not just the military has told us, we are a family now. We were never like this before. And that makes us feel good. It ought to make you feel good because you're helping us be there. Singing and ice cream. Who likes singing? Raise your hand, don't be ashamed. Okay. Well, there was no, or were no singings there. In fact, we don't even sing on Wednesday nights at all. It's, it's so unusual and it's hard for us because we're used to singing. We love to sing. Who likes ice cream? Some of us a little too much. But I said, you know what? Everything's expensive here. Why don't we try to find an ice cream freezer? By the way, when we were in South Carolina there at Twin City, I went into Batesburg one day to the hardware store and I said, do you have an ice cream freezer? He said, a what? I said, an ice cream freezer. I don't understand. Oh, you mean an ice cream churn? I said, okay. So what do y'all call them? Freezers? Churns? I'm getting some of both, because some of you aren't from here. So I said, I'm not going to talk about that nut that grows in the tree that y'all mispronounce either. But um, <laughs> I should put a picture up here. I've got two porta potties at the bottom of a palm tree that I took on Guam, and that's a pecan tree. But um, <laughs> anyway, but I bought two, two ice cream freezers, churns, whatever on Guam from Marketplace, really cheap, and we started having singings and ice creams, and it was very, very well received. Again, people love spending time together in fellowship, just having a good time. Isn't it nice to spend time with Christians having a good time? I enjoy it. I hope you do as well. If not, maybe you need to check your heart a little bit. So we had this, by the way, this young man. This is Catherine's brother, Ashley. Uh, we love Ashley to death. When we got there, I uh, got to know him and I said, Ashley, where, where's family? He said, well, my parents are in Ghana. I said, what? He said, yeah, once I joined the military, they decided to sell their house and move to Ghana. I said, were they from Ghana? No. I said, so where's home when you go back? He said, I don't have one. I said, well, son, we will be your home now. So for the next two years, we were nearly two years, we, we were family to Ashley. He too would come over to the house and fall asleep on the couch or the, or the chase. Uh, I think he's sitting on it there even. You would catch Ashley sound asleep. It took him about 30 seconds to get that way. But he felt at home. We love that young man. He is now in North Dakota. We, we hate that for him. To go from Guam to North Dakota, that's, that's a, quite a shock, uh, climatically speaking. But, uh, but uh, we are, we're thrilled to be able to serve with these military Christians, the singles, the families. Uh, and, of course, you see Jeff in the middle there as well, too. But I uh, said, so this, this guy is still single girls, and so is he, so is he. he that's Dagan. You, you met him. And, of course, Ashley's still single, too, but he's in North Dakota. Um, but he'll be out eventually, uh, and he's in the Air Force. And we enjoy our time with them. Uh, this, again, are our, our weekly young professionals, as Joanna calls it. I, I call them our youngins uh, that come over every week. Uh, this is Josh, and I for life of me, Josh Allen. Uh, he is not a member of the church, but he spent many weeks uh, at our house. Jeff, Megan, of course, there's Joanna. There's Ashley again. So I wanted Catherine to see this. Uh, we got several of Ashley. Um, of course, Dagan couldn't be with us in person that week, 
So I had to pick up a sign from somewhere where he dropped it. Uh, so I said, they can, can be with us in spirit at least uh, th- this week. Uh, but this is Michael and Matthew, uh, Michael, Michael and Madison. Uh, I've got cousins, Michael and Matthew. That's where that came from. Uh, but Michael and Madison and Lila Prado, uh, they are, well, he is Filipino Colombian actually. And she's a little Tennessee girl. Uh, but beautiful young family. We, we have come to appreciate them very much. They're going to be leaving us in January, unfortunately, but they're going to be in Georgia. Uh, they're going to be down in Valdosta. Uh, of course, there's good churches there. I have a good friend who's an elder and preacher there, so uh, they'll be in good shape. Of course, our, our weekly young professionals again there. Folks, spend time with 20-somethings. Ashley's actually 30-something. Uh, but spend time with 20-somethings on Bible study, just informal Bible study and listen to the things that they ask and they say. If you're not impressed, I'll be very surprised. But more than that, we started sometime last year well into that study. We started, of course, we'd pray every, every week, but we decided to let the men go around the room and pray as, as they felt that they, they wanted to or not. Uh, so they did. I'm gonna tell you what, those young men make me cry every week. Their prayers are so heartfelt and just beautiful. And they don't do it to impress us, but they do impress us. I know God appreciates them too. But that is the highlight of my week every week on Guam is that prayer time with those young men. Uh, But pray for them, uh, every one of them, the military and the the, the secular uh, folks as well. Uh, the layover in Honolulu, uh, did get to preach there, believe it or not. That's the only time I preached out of the United States this year. I rarely preach on Guam, did not go there to preach, went there to do evangelism. And there's a big difference. Uh, you need someone preaching, you need some doing evangelism. Uh, so we don't spend the time in the week to develop lessons. We spend the time in the week to go and reach people. Uh, so I would like to do more of it, but uh, we just spend time with Lima at Sin and his, his family wonderful family. The children are, are, are just they're beautiful, uh, great people. I encourage you to go visit Honolulu Church of Christ if you're going through or going to Hawaii. Uh, thankfully, they have a townhome, two townhomes actually, they're, they're duplex, that Lima and his, his family live on one side, the other side is open or available to missionaries and preachers who are transiting through. And we were very grateful for that. Uh, otherwise, we couldn't have stayed that long. It would have cost too much money. Our living cost... It's expensive. If you've been in the military, you know all about the, uh, the housing allowance or the housing cost. Uh, on Guam, everything is based on what the military uh, has. Twenty-four fifty a month for a married couple or family. That's just where it starts. Uh, we paid just a little bit less than that, twenty-four hundred a month. Uh, it's just, it's just how it is. Uh, my sister said, uh, you, you didn't get to see the house, but we actually have a good view of the ocean. She said, don't show people that. I said, Deb. If you live in the middle of the jungle, you live in the middle of a, a subdivision with no view whatsoever, or if you live beachside, you're going to pay the same per month. Which one are you going to choose? Uh, <laughs> that's just a no-brainer to me. Uh, and we actually pay a little less than we might in, in some other places. Uh, but there are no apartments on the south side. We needed to be in the south side because no one has ever done evangelism on the south side. So that's why we did that. Uh, our utilities are extremely high. You can see their allowances. We don't spend that much. Uh, but... That's going up, of course. We had a $100 a month allowance for about six months this, this past year uh, that's going away. So it's going to be $100 more uh, actually beginning this month. I can barely see that. I've reached that age. Gas was five twenty nine dollars a gallon when we left. Strangely, we got to Honolulu, and usually it's more expensive there, but their premium was cheaper than our regular. Uh, so you can see it costs a lot to be there. Food prices are higher. How many of you eat the bagged salads like Taylor Farms or the other, like that? they're like, what, $3.98 at Walmart, right? They're $8.99 on Guam. Uh, and that's just a little taste of it, but there's even more. Milk. That was 2022. Can you see that? Here's 2023. I'm dreading to see what 2024 has. 1449 for a gallon, or 14, yeah, 1449 for a gallon of milk. We don't drink a lot of milk. About the only time we use milk is for ice cream. So, you know, it's worth it. But, all right, uh, 
Our goals for 2023 were, and again, I can't see that, to immerse ourselves deeper into the culture and the community, to start more personal Bible studies and cultivate the ones we've already started, and there are some more. Uh, still working on those. Island life is very interesting. There's so much drama among islanders. It's even worse than here, and I didn't think that was possible. Uh, we want to encourage more fellowship and involvement in the church, the local church, to grow the trust of the local church leadership. Again, another story. I'll talk to the elders about that if they want to, uh, but we're working on that. Uh, to train the young men to be good leaders in the church and, and at home, Dagan is already aspiring to one day be an elder. He recognizes the need for that. Folks, we need to train these young men now. Now, to train them what a good marriage is about so that they will qualify when they get to be that age. Also, to be able to go into the local prison to teach, obviously I haven't got there yet, uh, for, for next year to continue all these goals, but also to evaluate the things we do and do them better or find other things that we can do. Also to further encourage leadership to lead the church spiritually. There is no spiritual leadership in the congregation there outside, of course, of what we do. And that's when the church has been stymied for so very long. Pray for us that we'll be able to break that barrier. We want to further consider the need to plant and establish another congregation on Guam because there is a great need. Uh, there's 170,000 plus people that live there in one congregation. And a lot of those people can't afford a car or the gas to get to that one congregation. Uh, we want to glorify God and strengthen the church in every way that we possibly can. Now, just thumb through these. Who's afraid of spiders and snakes? Close your eyes. That's a chicken. That's a lizard. I see. That's a spider. Uh, snake. Okay. Um, that's a raw photo. You know what that is? It has not been edited at all. It's just raw for you to throw in what color you want to. That's just, that's just what it looks like there. And again, just getting through there. Uh, you want to learn to, to surf? Oh, it didn't back up for me. Go to Talafofo Bay. It's about a mile and a half from my house. Uh, not me. I've got enough metal in me already. Um, Maywar was supposed to hit basically our house. It turned hard right that night, thankfully. It hit Anderson instead, which was a good scenario. Uh, we had very little damage to trees. Lost a couple of coconut trees, and that was about it. Uh, but we were very, very grateful for that. If it had hit the south end, it would have been devastating to the infrastructure there. It cannot handle it. The north end is a lot more developed. Uh, the road on the south end would have, it would have been gone, period. Uh, and the bridges would have been gone. And that would have been awful, to say the least. Uh, our website is thegospelplan.com. I encourage you to go to that and sign up for our newsletter. I know there are only a couple here who get our newsletter. We want all of you to get it. If you get email, we will not blow your inbox up. It won't be all the time. Maybe once a month or every few weeks when there's something to report. You'll see it. And we want you to know about it because we want you to be involved in this work. You're already involved financially. We want you to be involved with it by seeing what's going on. Uh, I guess that's the end of that, huh? I appreciate your attention. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me after worship assembly. I'll be glad to answer those things. And we, again, we appreciate being here. We're thankful for your support and for your prayers. And please, please continue both of those.